Dumplings and dancing and love. We learn more about Nikki, Enzo, and the art of eating soup dumplings. But there's more. Action abounds with this number two bombastic issue. Every great hero has a great villain. Someone who pushes them to the extremes and makes them better. Fiercer hero. Batman has the Joker. Spider-Man has Venom. And Nikki has the candy-coated super criminal known as Mr. Licorice. Along with his cute but deadly sidekick, Bat Noir, Mr. Licorice makes his debut, causing mayhem and chaos for Nikki and Enzo. The Addiction Number Two is an exciting read, and as, as as super collectible as it is, a fiendishly fun first appearance. <laughs> that is a promo. Uh- What is going on, ladies and gents? Welcome to Collectors Gone Digital. My name's Josh, and on today's episode, we're recording from a new setup. So I uh, I tested all my settings beforehand, but if there are any hiccups with the audio, you guys know why. But in today's episode, we're going to be covering Vivi's first ever group interview on their YouTube channel, and that's interviewing the addiction creators alongside David Yu. Now, before I get started with the video, you guys know I like to keep this stuff short. But we do have our spring and summer fitness collection now available in the store. We got new sport duffel bags, moisture wicking, performance tees, as well as performance jackets. So if you guys are interested, you can check all that stuff out using the link in the description. But as for today's episode, we're covering 15 different points. So I'm not wasting any more time. Grab a drink, grab a snack, sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right, so I'm just going to get right into things here. Uh, they start the group interview off talking about the publishers available on VV Comics. And David talks about how Marvel Comics is the first publisher, as we all know. And David also mentions that the Addiction series is also on VV's list to bring onto the platform. Now, as mentioned in last week's recap video, uh, David is also in talks with independent publishers. And in terms of new ones, 20th Century Fox is going to be joining Marvel's Frontline, and they are going to be joining the VV Comics platform soon. David actually confirms in this interview, he said in the last one that Planet of the Apes and Alien vs. Predator were two brands that were going to be dropping, but he does confirm here that 20th Century is going to be starting with Planet of the Apes. Vivi is also in talks with manga and anime publishers, and those international comics are going to be localized to different languages, David says. So he uses the example of the most popular Chinese comics are going to be written in, well, I guess Mandarin or uh, Cantonese. So next up, we have a bit of a weird question here, just considering we have a group interview with every single person on the panel involved with digital comics. But uh, the addiction creators are asked if they believe digital is the future. And we actually got a few answers here. So David starts off by talking about how digital comic reading is a large market in Asia. That says marketing. It's supposed to say market, my bad. And then he also says that he's seen it himself. Uh, People are often seen reading while commuting on the train in Japan. Now moving over to Vincent's answer here, he says yes, that digital is the future, but it will never replace physical prints. And this is an interesting point because I know, again, going back to that topic of like, whether the digital side is helping the physical or not, uh, I know a lot of people in our community and even people like my collectibles who have owned a physical uh, comic book shop, they make the argument that digital prints are helping the physical. So I liked hearing this point from Vincent because Although, and I'm pretty open about this, that, you know, I don't come from the comic book side. uh, It's quite understandable why people will always want physical prints, right? Being able to hold a physical book, right? Feel the texture of the pages, see the light from the window of the room that you're sitting in reflect off the art instead of just seeping through the digital copy. But Vincent also highlights some of the solutions that digital prints are providing. So he says you have to ship the physicals, hold the inventory, and then the person who bought the physical has to have storage space. So digital makes it accessible, magical in his words, and fun, like we all know. So next up, we have an interesting slide here. We actually get to a point in the interview where Corey covers some analytics from the launch of VV Comics. So they had 21,000 users in the first 24 hours on the platform. Of those users, it was a 50-50 split between US and non-US users. And then this one kind of caught me off guard at first. He said 430 stories published within the first 10 days. And when he said this, I thought he meant like stories on like the main app on the social feed. And then I was making the video and it kind of clicked with me. I was like, oh, you know what? I bet you he meant news stories because I do remember seeing a, uh, a lot of articles popping up. So. 
So next up, there is a section of the interview where David Q, yes, David Q, not David U. I got a little confused myself at times. He actually started talking about, uh, you know, his experience with working with other artists and how best to work together. So he said that it's always easier once you find common ground. Once you find that, then you can figure out how to manage the different personalities. And this is when he refers to other artists that he's had to do this with. I gotta say, I didn't know anything about David Q prior to this. If you guys do have time to watch the full interview back, the guy is super well-spoken, but he also has his thoughts laid out. And there's some really interesting things that I'm gonna try and recap in this video, but it's hard to say some of the stuff better than the way he put it. Now, one of those things that he said was his motto, right now, fix later never hesitate to get the work done he actually taped a note to his monitor to remind him to write stuff down in his words we've gotten a lot of great stuff from getting something down so honing it fixing it what ifing it playing with it and then tweaking something just a little bit so this is where david q starts to dive a lot deeper into his motto of uh right now and fix later and he actually relates it to nikki from addiction so apparently Nikki actually started as a male character, but because lots of popular characters that we know today, like Batman and James Bond, which he referred to, they're all men, this is what led to them changing the character to a female. And then David says that led to other questions, like, what's her background? He said that all the things they gave her made her richer and more interesting, and it gave them more ways to put her into situations that would make things more interesting. So this is where David starts talking about, okay, what actually makes a drama? And we're still talking about David Q here. But he says that putting the character in their most uncomfortable position is how you do this. In the case of addiction number two, uh, Nikki's actually about to go talk to a drug lord named Como Cativo. But in the process of doing this, she can't stop thinking about the fact that her mother used to be a heroin addict. So in the story, she actually has to face this head on. So we had David Yu, David Q, and Vincent all get interviewed in this video. So how exactly did they all meet? Now, when it comes to David Yu and Vincent, uh, they met at a comic convention. And in David's words, Vincent is his dealer. Now at this convention, Vincent apparently told David that he met a couple people who had gotten involved with digital comics. And uh, David's response to that was, hey, Vincent, I'm the co-founder of Vivi, and uh, we already offer them. So apparently Vincent invited David back to his office after the event and uh, started showing him all his work with the addiction series. It was here where both of them learned of their similar beginnings in business. So on Vincent's side, he would sell dollar comics on the streets and uh, David would go to clearance sales and thrift stores and buy small ticket items that he would resell in his shop. So David said that this resonated with him. Things led to addiction dropping on Vivi. He did say that there were uh, multiple meetings though before they uh, finalized the details. Now, in terms of how David met David, they too met at a convention, but this one was New York Comic Con. So David Q apparently showed David Yu his work, and uh, it put the idea of independent publishers in David Yu's head because this was work that David had always been looking for and hoping to have on Vivi. Now, moving on, we got a quick point here, but it's a cool one. And uh, apparently, inside of Addiction Number Two, guys, there's a thank you page with photos of the community on it so people who attended new york comic con last year and visited the booth you have a chance to show up in the comic itself i think that this is a fantastic way to show appreciation to the community i know that their launch at that event was even a surprise to them it was a first of its kind for us so i think it's an awesome decision on their part and uh, david q does mention how they could be doing it in future issues as well now, speaking of future issues, we have number two dropping on the platform soon. And just to provide a little refresher around number one, the series is food centric, where number one, it was centered around Grimaldi's in New York City. In number two, there's a scene with Mila's Dumplings, who's also in NYC. And this happens to be a restaurant that both David and Vincent are customers of, fans of, and they figured that it would just fit because Nikki is half Chinese. So because of that, they actually overnighted Vivi some dumplings for the show. And uh, apparently on their website, you can use VV15 as a promo code to get a discount on your order. Now within number two, we're actually going to be introduced to a new villain apparently. 
and a very wacky one at that. And because of that, I'm going to let David and Vincent explain this one. He looks tasty and, re- and re- outrageous and ridiculous, but deadly as all get out. I, I was just telling them, Vincent, I think when you had cut out that it's, it's important not to underestimate your villain. And <laughs> these people are so crazy and over the top and so narcissistic and, and wild that at the beginning, Nikki is just stunned. She's just fought cartel soldiers and she's been obsessing about her, the night that, you know, the, the mob tried to kill her. And then she walks into what she calls the express train to crazy town. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let me tell you a little bit about the design for for Mr. Licorice. Um, I, 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 I pictured him kind of like a, a little bit like an Elvis type character in, in the sense that, you know, he's, he's larger than life. And, and so we put him in a 70s style jumpsuit, um, one piece jumpsuit, and then we wanted to adorn it and, and, and have everything he does is candy themed. And, and a lot of this was from inspiration from the old Batman TV show in the 60s with Adam West and Frank Gorshin uh, and, 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 and everybody else and, and, and one of the wonderful villains then. And so we made him like have these like candy canes all over his costume here. He's got these wrist gauntlets that look like those little red and white um, candies that you used to get hard candies when you were a kid um, that nobody liked. And then you also, they, they, they look like that. They have these gauntlets here that shoot out super tensile licorice. So it's kind of like, almost like a spidey webbing. Um, all of, everything is like candy themed, all his weapons. So he has razor sharp uh, candy canes that he can throw. They're incredibly accurate. Um, and then he has even uh, around his neck, he has the little candy necklaces that we used to get when we were kids. And God knows what they do. Uh, and I wanted him to have kind of like a, a, a long plume of of reddish orange hair, and so we we just I just wanted to make him look as colorful and 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 like candy like as possible. And this design, by the way, goes all the way back to the '90s. He was originally we we originally called him the Twizzler, and uh, the first drawing was done by Louis Small Jr., who was a very a popular artist in the '90s on Vampirella. And then we realized later on that you can't use the Twizzler because of Twizzlers. So we changed him to Mr. Licorice, and here he is today in all of his glory. Now diving deeper into an earlier point that David Q made around how everything that we added to Nikki only made her richer and more interesting, uh, they talk a little bit more about character development. And more specifically, how they looked at all the layers of these people's personalities and the things they might be obsessed with at times. So the family they grew up in, their dreams in life, feelings in a relationship. Vincent also chimes in here and says it's important to create stakes. I don't actually know what he meant there, to be honest, but uh, he says, get it down, get it rolling, and then figure it out later. Sound familiar? Now, in terms of future plans for the Addiction series, David Q says their intentions are a series of mini series. So some might be three issues, some might be 80 page giants, and then some might be just normal 24 page comics. In his exact words, we have a lot in the Bible of different places we can go. And last but not least, if you guys stay till the end, they actually released a little secret. Addiction number one isn't addiction number one. Well, it is, but it isn't. And here's why. They reveal that there's a secret edition number zero. And this was a previous version of the story that was released in the late 90s. The issue was drawn by Lisa Martinez, and it was a different version of Nikki in that time period. Pretty cool. If anyone can find photos on that, I'd love to see them. Ladies and gents, that's going to conclude today's episode. I hope you enjoyed. Those were 15 points to recap Vivi's first ever group interview on their channel. I know I said in our last video, I'm working on an episode with my LCSs, still working on it, not exactly where I want it to be just quite yet, so I am going to push it till next week. But in the meantime, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, uh, we do now have our fitness collection available. New bags, performance tees, and performance jackets are now available. And if you guys have any feedback with regards to that apparel, I'd greatly appreciate it. But if you enjoyed the content, make sure to like and subscribe. Comment down below what you want to see in a future episode. And as for next, I'll catch you then.